So let's look at five unexpected uses of Microsoft Word for teaching languages online. So we can use Microsoft Word to replicate some of those kinesthetic activities, matching cards or jumbling texts that we do in the real classroom. So here I've got a matching activity. It's a refresher for more advanced learners on conditionals. So it's got the zero, first, second and third conditionals all there. And it's got functions, form and examples. Now, all we need to do to make this uh, a matching activity is make lots of text boxes. Because with text boxes, learners can easily just grab them and move them around. So they just need to download the document. I've prepared everything for them. And then it's a matter of moving. So for example, if had verb three would have verb three, third conditional, uh, if plus present, first, orders, um, there's an examples, and we've got functions as well. I've just organized the boxes to be in different colors or with different backgrounds to be consistent. So for example, to talk about an unlikely future condition, that would be our sec second conditional, etc. You get the idea. So with text boxes, we can really easily replicate the moving activities for our learners, even though we're online. All right, a second example there is jumbled texts. So really good for thinking about text organization. And here I've got two emails that I've jumbled up and I've separated into paragraphs or different ideas. Um, one email that's more formal and one that's more informal. And all learners have to do is then, again, download and decide, highlight each particular chunk or paragraph and move it to where they think it should go. All right, so it only takes a very limited amount of um, Microsoft Word skills to move things around and come up with the right order. Okay, and what about a timeline for illustrating a grammar point or tense? So let's try the present perfect simple for life experience. So a little heading there. Then we're gonna use a mix of drawing tools and text boxes. So here we've got the draw tool. This is Microsoft Word for Mac, but it's available on all. Let's choose this pen and I think I'll just change it to black. Okay. And let's add our representation of our life in green. Hopefully it's continuing tomorrow. Okay, now we want some text boxes. Okay, that needs to be bigger. All right, and my example sentence will have three times, so we'll copy that and paste. And I'll copy that once more so I can write the word now. Okay, so far so good. And now we just want a, an example sentence. So here's our example sentence, and we'll just make that a bit bigger. Okay, and correspondingly, the title then a bit bigger again. And there we have in a couple of minutes, or hopefully a bit less than that, um, a good representation of a timeline for the present perfect simple for life experience.
Now, rather than having a physical whiteboard behind me, which I can trip over and might be hard to get in the camera shot, or using the Zoom or Teams chats, which are quite bitty little elements, I prefer to have a dedicated Microsoft Word template for a whiteboard in landscape mode so it fits a screen size. As you can see here, I have designed it to be just like or at least I would use in a real classroom with outline on the left, the central field for the main items, the functions, language and grammar, and vocab on the right. What I like to do then is generally keep what we did last lesson but make it smaller so it's there for revision, like so. Then we can you know, recycle those at the start of the lesson and then we've got plenty of space to move on to what comes up in the new lesson. And we can, there are lots of highlighting tools we can use there, obviously colors. We can highlight word stress with caps, with capital letters, or bold, or underline, or all of the above. So there are lots of tools we can use. We can incorporate the drawing tools as well if we want. So we can do quite a lot there and have a really good uh, whiteboard imitation. And then, of course, after the lesson, we can mail it to the learners so they've got their own record. All right, how about using Microsoft Word for a couple of the good old classroom games like Hangman and Pictionary? I've got my way of setting that up really quickly in break time for learners ready after a break. So I just use underscore, a gap between each. I usually have to highlight and change the font size as well so it's nice and easy to see. And I just usually give seven question marks. That's it. So if they get it wrong, or if they don't choose the right letter, one's off. Of course, we could use the drawing tools as well to do any type of hangman or to do a house or whatever non-violent way of doing it you want to do. But for me, question marks, question marks work. What about Pictionary? Well, here learners will be sharing their own screens, using their own documents. You could potentially give them two or three minutes to prepare a document because maybe they want to use some shape tools as well. So, for example, inserting some shapes or even pictures. But let's say we're just using the drawing tools. Okay, so let's see what I can come up with. Okay, so... Any ideas so far? Apple? No, no, not an apple. Tomato? No, not a tomato. You got it? Yep, a strawberry. Well done. Fantastic. So you can still do Pictionary with learners using Microsoft Word. And as I say, if you like, you give them a couple of minutes because they're by themselves in front of the computer no one's watching, they could perhaps also uh, prepare a document in advance for a picture. So I hope that's given you some teaching ideas for your online teaching using Microsoft Word. If you'd like to know more, you can check out my Teaching Languages Online course on Udemy. Have a great day.